Welcome to Devon Dragon Radio. I'm your host, ML Wishtrack. I'm here wearing our sponsor today from Red Carpet Rocks. Their designer earrings, love them. And from Kenneth J. Lane, this designer necklace. You can find them at Red Carpet Rocks or at Neiman Marcus. Here with me today, I have author Sherry Chapman. Welcome. Hi, hi. Glad to be here. So we're talking about A Killer Revisited. Now, this is your new one. We do not have a release date as of right now. But what led to writing this one? Well, um, I actually got the idea from a anthology um, prompt that went out. It was about reincarnation. And I was like, what am I going to write about uh, someone getting reincarnated? What can I do? And this idea just came to me and I went with it. And I I really like how it's turned out. Awesome. Now, is this meant to be a standalone or a series? Well, I originally wrote it as a standalone, but I, for some reason, like to end in um mild cliffhanger so I can expand it if I want to. And my editor thinks um, it definitely could be made into many books. So, I mean, at this point, I, I don't know where I would go next, but I have a lot of options. <laughs> well, that's always great. Now you do have the series, um, Wild Passions or Passions of the Heart, depending on how you look for it on Google. So we just got Chief Spirit Bearer out not too long ago. So you do have yeah. My passion releases. series is historical romance. Um, it is way different from the killer series. The killer book, I mean, um, the passion series is um, an Indian meets white man kind of at the the first um, times they came into their territory, and a chief of the Lakota Sioux falls for a white woman. She gets injured. He takes her back to his village. And there's learning different cultures, language gaps, things like that. So they kind of, I talk a lot about their life, but it's also a romance and, you know, some misconceptions. (laughs) Well, you cannot have a good story that's in (laughs) historical without the romance. It doesn't matter what culture (laughs) you're in. If you throw the romance in there, you automatically have a good story. I agree. And the killer doesn't have, um, it doesn't have a romantic element, basically. And it's the first one I think I've written that really doesn't have a romantic um, element. But in that book, he does. I'll, do you want me to talk more about Wild Passion right this now? This is yours. Okay. Honey. We'll talk about anything <laughs> you want. Okay, so I I made an about face with this new book. It is a thriller. It um, it's about the army and they've cloned uh, soldiers with super powers, I guess you could say. So they have a lot of machinery built into their psyche where they can access data. They have um, so soaked up Captain America. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yep, pretty much. So um, they, they can um, read data with their minds. They have x-ray vision. They can repel bullets with force fields in their hands. Um, they have an invisibility cloak basically called the chameleon mode. And um, anyway, but they're, they can't live on their own. They're totally operated through like a remote control device. So the government hired a doctor to find souls to somehow insert into the clones to make them become alive. So um, they decide to try to use death row inmates because taking the soul from an alive person would kill them. So since the inmates are gonna be executed anyway, they decided what a perfect combination for a killer is to put the death row inmate soul into the clone but the first experiment actually remembered his past life and didn't want to be experimented on. So he's seeking revenge against the doctors. Well, that's always a good thing, right? Like we take a death row inmate that's a born killer basically, because that's what science tells us in movies. (laughs) I'm basing it on movie science, not real science. Um, And then you put that psyche into a robot or whatever so are we creating another 
serial killer if they're already a serial serial killer i mean i can't talk today either so (laughs) well and that was the theory you know like when people are born if you believe in reincarnation you can't remember your past lives but they uh the doctors also developed this pill it's called the yellow charge and they give it to the inmate when he is receiving the soul from the death row inmate so they think the soldiers won't remember their past life and then the the pill um, cures all their illnesses or, you know, so if it jars their body to receive the soul, it, it fixes the problem that it causes. So it actually fixes more than they think. And that's how the, the clone can remember his past life. So yeah, they didn't plan on that part. <laughs> yeah. You need a sequel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what my editor was saying. He's like, you could make this into a 20 year career. And I'm like, well, thank you. That's, really great that you think that but I would have to think which direction or I guess I could probably go many directions but it is way different from my normal writing so if you're my normal fan that likes historical romance or you know it it is very different but um, I think this is probably um, of course it's like comparing apples to oranges but Mm -hmm. I do think this one was a little more creative than the other one. Oh yeah but see when you get step out of our normal we either find all new readers or we find the readers that go what did you do stick to what you know. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's always fun to experiment. Yeah I loved it in fact it, it was so fun that um I, I don't want to be confined to one genre. I would mm-hmm. like to be a multi-genre author. And I have some shapeshifter stories that I'm going to be working on. I've got um, another one that I'm, my next focus is finishing up um, the other side of Privileged, which is way different from anything else anything. I've written. <laughs> so I've got a lot of new things I'm trying with my writing coming up. I mean, you I have the time now. Go back as a and retired write the teacher, you have time to experiment with the writing. <laughs> and it's fun. I love it. And I've got great people in my life because of that. I love Melissa. She has a wonderful person. And Tina, I, I'd i say they're you know up there with my best friend range ever. And I love the connections that writing that has we brought have. into we're, my life. We're three sisters, basically. Yes, I love it. <laughs> I mean, we have our own little triad. <laughs> yes, I, I am so thankful, very thankful that it has brought us all together. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, this is do fun things like this. This is great. Yeah, I mean, we get our name out there. We get you promoted properly. And we promote on several platforms, IGTV, Facebook, um, Spotify now. So we're just awesome. picking up all these new uh, avenues to promote our authors and promote other authors. And I get to hear about all these sorts of books that I don't have time to read. (laughs) And don't forget, if you love our books, don't forget to leave reviews because author reviews are very important in our world because it helps promote our books too. So um, all of our authors, we just want that. They algorithm with Amazon. I hate this algorithm. I'm going to try to find a way around this one day. But you have to not be friends with the author to leave an author review, even if you um, buy the book yourself. They take so many uh, book reviews off, especially for indie authors. Maybe Goodreads. Goodreads, can you do that Mm -hmm. with Be Friends? So Goodreads is the best place. Yeah, Goodreads is excellent. Um, Barnes and Nobles is wonderful for posting reviews. Um, Books a Million, I don't know where it's at in the country, but I know they only have a few stores, but their reviews that you post on those sites are verified and they don't take them down where Amazon takes so many reviews down. Yeah, I I don't like that either because it's it's not fair to people who work really hard to promote if they don't even let your friends and family, which is how you start promoting in the first place, I think. Yeah. As a new author, your first reviewers are your friends and family. You're not going to get a new um, audience over in the UK 
if they never heard of you and you have zero reviews. I agree. So it's just an algorithm and I cannot talk today. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's just one of those things that we have to figure out as authors, as a community of authors, how to get around it. And the best way to get around it is leave the reviews on Barnes and Nobles. Leave them on Walmart if your book's on Walmart. I know all the tree and press, press has their books on Walmart, just for an example. If it's not there, let me know and I'll make sure it gets there. <laughs> but there's other places other than just Amazon. Right, yeah. And Goodreads kind of brings in a bunch of different um, platforms into, so like, you know, if you, if you leave a review on Amazon and somehow say, like for me, example, I was with um, a different company and when we switched over to Trant, you can lose your reviews. But mm -hmm. like if you, if, if Goodread has your reviews, you don't lose your reviews, they stay. Yeah. So you have to start all over on Amazon and, you know, you really need those reviews. So um, I like Goodreads because it does keep all of the reviews ever made about your book. Yes. And I I love their site. And then you can go on there. Sometimes an author will give away books for reviews or just have a giveaway because their book's doing so well. I know. I love it. I like, I think that's a great idea too, so, but I'm excited for a killer to get out there. And I, my no, mom I, said, out of soon, I promise as soon as we have a release date, we'll have it blasted everywhere that <laughs> I have access to and you have access to yes. but it's one of those books I knew it was coming it's just I don't have the date yet but we do have a lot of books coming out with Triant Press this year we have Rob, RB Cars coming out we have Ernest Robinson's which I'll talk to later today if not tomorrow and I have more books coming out myself but they're all in multiple languages yeah, that's awesome. I so love it. Th the next thing is actually getting the rest of the tree and press into the other languages as well. Yes, that's that's time consuming, but it is going to be great when it gets done. That'll be awesome. Yeah. And everyone's like, well, how did you do this? Well, I had these languages done two years ago. <laughs> so it's not that <laughs> I sat here and had time to do it. No, I had this done two years ago. I'm just releasing them now. Mm -hmm. It does take time. It's lengthy. Like um, I was at the bowling alley and a couple of the guys I bowl with are veterans. And so I would ask them some questions, you know, and, and help that define or develop my character in the book. Mm -hmm. And so I told them, I said, I finally got my final edits done and I'm turning in my book. And they're like, hasn't it been a year? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, but you know, your editor says, do this, you do it. And then you turn it back in and then they say, do that and you do it. So it just takes a long time. Writing the story is the fast part, but everything else is so lengthy. I have three books right now that are written. Okay. I have two in edits. One I'm uh, um, holding off on because I'm not satisfied with my version of the book. So I'm not sending it to the editor yet. One editor came back with some things that I have to change. The other editor gave me a 200 page review of edits. Ooh. And it's wow. not major edits. It's if anyone one understands me, I'm horrible with grammar and spelling. <laughs> but that doesn't stop the writing process. And that's no, what editors not. are for. So all my edits are not storyline. It's all grammar or spelling. Mm -hmm. And this is the first book where it's going to be completely, completely edited. Woohoo! Yeah. I took <laughs> out. I'm glad. That's awesome. Uh, well, if you read the original story um, of Light and Dark, you would notice in the front of the books, there's a letter to the reader that everyone ignores. Yes. <laughs> that says the spelling, the grammar, and the misused words is intentional. Well, you find out at the end of the fourth book why. But now you're getting into a new series, so all those grammar things have to go away. <laughs> yeah, I think that's great. And it's kind of neat, too. But you're right. I don't think author, I mean, not authors, readers 
sometimes there is a message there for a reason and they just want to get to the story. So they skip that part. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes the letters from the authors, it's actually relating to the story itself. It gives you a big old Easter egg into what you're reading. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah, it does have to explain wait to the end of the book for to figure out what that Easter egg is. So. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's great. I, I, I'm excited and I can't wait to get to work on my next book now. So, that's so what which I'll be one am I going to be looking at next? Um, the Other Side of Privileged is the first one. And then the one I want to work on after that, I don't know if I, we've mentioned it, but I don't know if you remember. Uh, it's uh, about- Werewolves and Green Beans or something like that? Not that one. <laughs> I, I I have, it's a shapeshifter too though, but it's um, where these kids crash onto the Bermuda Triangle and there's okay. two different species of shapeshifters. alliances. Yes, that's the one. You're awesome. <laughs> I do remember things. If I- You do, you know, better than I me for it, sure. I really will remember it. I promise. Uh, you're better than me. My kids think I have part-timers, we call it. <laughs> <laughs> in fact uh, you know I sell puppies I was emailing someone the other day and I have a lot of puppies so I have a lot of clients but um I accidentally sent some I sent the wrong pictures to somebody and it wasn't their puppy and so you know they're like am I talking to or two different people and I just laughed because yeah sometimes I feel like that <laughs> but it's just because I've got too many information we do that, in one I mean, spot we have our day job for you as puppies yes. for me it's craziness that was never ending <laughs> and then we write and then we get confused are we writing are we in imaginary world somewhere are we doing something that's actually for our day job and you know what it's so neat that we do have that option because it kind of does relieve stress when you get to go live in your own world. Yes, it sometimes can be stressful if you get stuck on a scene or whatever, but I just, I, it's like reading, but in a different way. It's like you create it. It's so neat to, mm -hmm. you know, write your story and see it come alive. I, I think it's, it's amazing. So I love it that we share that, that we have that together. It's great. Oh, it is wonderful. And anyone that hasn't tried writing a story, please try it. It's a great stress, stress reliever. Right now is the most stressful time in my life that I've had in the recent years. And I'm making a killer storyline out of it. Because if you go through a stressful situation and you write it out from a third person looking in at the situation, it becomes completely hysterical. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does. But it's sure you know, it's not in the in the time frame that it's happening but yeah mm -hmm. I think it'll be a great story Melissa <laughs> I mean you got a glimpse of my craziness right now so I mean this is how friends and authors work we collaborate and we work together and we develop a story and then we add more crazy to it <laughs> yeah I love it it's great and and you know what it is nice to have a sister that you can mm -hmm. go to and just say hey what do you think about this or that? And they mm -hmm. can tell you, you know, hey, this sounds good because sometimes you need that outside influence on, on your writing. And it's nice to have that family togetherness that they can add something that you may not see because you're in the middle of it. But. Yeah, sometimes we have to step outside and go, hey, let's step backwards. Now let's look in at the situation instead of being in the center. And then you can usually find a solution. Yeah. Even in the writing, I mean, if you get stuck on writing, you can go here, read this, help me figure it out, because <laughs> I wrote myself <laughs> into a box. <laughs> right. It happens for sure. Mm -hmm. So where can our listeners and our viewers find you? Well, um, I am on Facebook, um, Sherry Branson Chapman. I also have an author page on Facebook, author Sherry Chapman. Um, I have a website. Um, I would have to... It's Wix, Wix, um, I can't, it's, it, it has prayer paw puppies in it, but it's my author site. Um, I'm on, oh gosh, LinkedIn and Twitter, but my main thing is Facebook. 
Yeah. But we can buy books everywhere. Like Melissa said, you know, Walmart, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, mm -hmm. Goodreads. Anywhere online that books are sold, right. you can pretty mm -hmm. much find our Sherry's books. So, but it was so good talking to you today. And <laughs> we need to do this more often. <laughs> yeah, let's do. I hope to have another new release in the next month or two, I hope. <laughs> Maybe. We'll see. Well, let's get a killer revisited out there. And then we can go on to the other side of privilege. Perfect. Thank you, Melissa. I appreciate it. Have a wonderful day. And for our reviewers and our listeners, happy reading. <laughs>